Hey everybody, if you've watched any of our videos, you'll know we spend a lot of time saying these words. Thorough road work. It's another edition of Whiteboard Wednesday, and we're going to be talking about thorough road work. So, come along with me, Rodney Elmer, and we'll have a good look at how maybe we can put a big buck in your rig. When we're talking about road work, we're not talking about road hunting. We're talking about finding a track from a road. Now, a lot of times deer will cross roads and it gives you a chance to look over a lot of country in a hurry, you know? So when we're out on timber company land, right, and there's tons of logging roads everywhere and our, our brown roads that just go out, um, the scale of this could be like five miles across by four miles this way, say. Um, we take our truck and we drive out a road. When we have a brand new snowstorm, we'll drive out those roads and we'll go look for where a big buck might have crossed the road. It allows us to check a lot of territory in a hurry and if a buck happens to come across the road, we can put it to work for us. Whenever we come onto a road system, and this, like we said, is five miles by four miles and all the little circles represent landings where logging has occurred. Um, Myself, uh, whenever I'm going out and checking roads, we'll, we'll start out the road and we'll look for a deer track and we'll drive right out through. You may come to a gate. A lot of times when we get to the gate, we may stop, especially like with a fork and we know there's a dead end. We'll stop here, let a fella out and let him walk out that farther. He can, a lot of, a lot of places in Maine and in, in Vermont and like on state and federal land, you can't drive there, but you can walk and start hunting. One of the fellas will jump out of the rig and grab his gun and he can go ahead and load up and start walking out the road. He'll walk out the road. Meanwhile, the Jimmy's truck will turn around and we'll drive up this road and we'll go and look for a track and then drive up to the landing, turn around and come back and then swing back up to here. And when he's walked out a distance, he'll turn around and come back and we'll even have checked a road behind a gate good idea to do, especially if you can't find anything out here, go for a walk behind the gate somewhere, wherever there's rocks across the road, don't drive around the gates, don't, don't, don't go where you're not supposed to with your vehicle, but you're free to walk out there, go check it out and see if there's been anything out there. That's one of our good little quick tips that you might pick up a track wherever everyone else was driving around, they wouldn't find that track. Another thing that can happen sometimes is if a deer went out through here and crossed, and the good information part of it is that we dropped off, uh, say, Taylor, and he went up and he found a deer track right here. He can say so on the radio. Meanwhile, the vehicle has driven up through here, and if he gets all the way up there and he hasn't seen a track yet, then that means that deer is inside of this block of woods or it's moved up this way. And that's really valuable information and you can gather the information quicker by using the vehicle to find out where the deer is and at least isolate a block of woods where there's a good potential for a deer to be. Remember, we're looking for one deer in this giant haystack, so that is really handy, handy little trick that works well. If he gets up there and nothing's come out, we may drop a hunter off here, especially if it's not very far over to the next road, and another hunter can start his way across here. And if he crosses this and the deer never comes out, the original hunter can finish hunting and go right to it. And he can hunt, and now he knows for sure that it's in there. Uh, there's been a bunch of times where the, the second hunter to go in the woods finds another track coming in from this way and now there are two buck in that area and we know it and two guys are already in there and already hunting on it so you get right to it right off the bat and that may tell you there's a doe in heat or something you can learn all kinds of things about it by making these little cross runs and checking it out and then using the radios for information we can be able to tell if there's one in there or not meanwhile the truck can come back down again and he doesn't see anything and they're just going to have a quick look. He can continue coming back down to the road. One of the things I've seen a lot of hunters do and I've done it myself is to drive out real quick, get to the end, 
Be real thorough in your road work, looking it over really good, not driving over a track where the deer jumped the road, noticing every track that crosses the road. I've driven out at 100 miles an hour and didn't see anything, or even slowly, I went real slow and careful and didn't see a thing. Then I turned around and came back thinking, oh, there's no deer here, and I drove fast. And then drove over one that crossed it fresh. I literally drove by and the deer crossed the road right after me. And I wasn't looking, I wasn't paying attention, I wasn't thorough about my road work. Look on the way out and look on the way back because it, it could cross right behind you and you'd never know it. The other thing too is if a vehicle just drove up that road and now you start up that road, that doesn't mean a deer couldn't have crossed the road behind them or doesn't cross the road behind you. So like um, one could go across the road at any minute, so don't worry about it and just keep looking and pay attention all the time. When we get done that road, we drive back down, swing out around, start up the next road, check it. Um, say a doe crossed the road right here. We make note of that. A couple of moose, a cow and a calf went across the road and they went up onto this ridge right here. We drive a little farther up and we see where a buck has gone up here. That's an interesting note, right? And if I now suddenly have to get out and go hunting, I can either get out right here, or if we were gonna double team, right, we could get out on the buck track, or we could even get out on the buck track, and if, say, it was just two of you and you weren't interested in hunting together, but you wanted to be in the same woods, if Taylor and I were just hunting together and he wanted that buck track, I would drive back down to the doe track and now I would walk up the doe track and I would check, it's the rut, right? And odds are good that these two will meet up on this ridge somewhere and we'll both be taking advantage of it. And it could work to both of our benefits. If we don't find anything and we come back down, we'll start in on the next road and we'll drive out, check it. If uh, a couple of moose have gone across and then we drive up farther and we see where the moose have crossed again, we make notes of these things. Um, we see uh, two or three does have come across right in here. When we come back two days later and we drive across and two or three more does have crossed there again, now we know to keep checking that spot over and over. Whenever we're doing our road work, we know that's a spot where the deer cross and we pay attention to that, right? We're gathering information about those woods all the time. If there's tons and tons of moose tracks going up on top of this ridge and we want to go moose shed hunting later, where are we going to go? We're going to go to that, right? If there's bulwark all over that and every moose in the world seems to go on top of that one finger, we're going to be going up there and checking it out. More information that we can use to our benefit. That gathering information as you go, even where hunters park and they spend all their time, right? And I know that they're all going up onto this ridge from that one particular landing. Where we want to go, we might want to be offset from that and go in, in from the other side of it, right? We're gathering information about the animals that are out there, where they're crossing the roads, what terrain they seem to be liking to use and what all the hunters are doing at the same time because they're part of the whole hunting dynamic as you go out there. You're going to run across no matter what days when you can't find a track from the road and you're going to have to go a little bit more, you're going to have to do a little bit more. Say you drove up through on all the roads and you, you visited them all and there are no tracks anywhere. Next thing will be if I know where there's any signpost rubs I'll walk to them. We'll park the truck and I'll head right in and go and check and see if any bucks have visited those. Those are important spots. Okay, that qualifies as a signpost. If there's a place where a whole bunch of does like to hang out, say a little small clear cut and there's been tons of doe tracks around it and it's close to the road, we'll drop somebody off. They'll walk up through and go and look for a track off road. Just a quick jump, let's say a quarter mile from the road, work their way right up there. You'll find that a lot of deer are, like a lot of deer movement is parallel to a road. They don't like to cross roads. They know crossing roads gets them in trouble and where they do cross the road, they try and do it where it's a quick get, a, get away, right? They can just shoot right across, they've got cover on both sides. It's usually somewhat uphill to downhill most of the time or it's real thick, especially if it's flat, it's someplace real thick, 
or there's some kind of a notch that they like to use. So if we drive out a road and say this one here, say this one's a half a mile long and this is a mile and a half, we'll drive out the mile and a half, drop off somebody to have a look and they'll walk out through and check that real quick. While well, we've had time enough to come back here and check the little small side road. If they happen to say, yeah, I've got a track right here and it's one buck and he's right in here someplace, then we can just leave him and he can continue hunting and we'll go about our business looking around the rest of the road. Sharing information is important and you want to make sure you do it. This withholding all the time, <laughs> it can cost you, right? Get away your goal. So that's what we're doing here. We'll drop somebody off and they can have a quick check. We can shoot back up, grab them, and come back. And now we've been across there within a half an hour, three different times, and if something had a chance to shoot across, we'll be up on it. Another real good scenario is, especially if you have somebody with long legs, we like to drop somebody off, and they'll shoot up through a pass and come out on another landing someplace. One of the things that I do while I'm doing road work, and especially on days when we haven't, can't find any tracks, is to make sure and mark on my GPS all the exits to every piece of woods. So if we have a big mountain and it has access in a whole bunch of different spots, we'll drive around and mark each one of these landings. I only mark my GPS where a deer is laying there dead and I need to get to it or where there's access to the woods. So when I'm up on a mountain and it's time to go home, I can look at which one of the landings is closest to me and I can shoot right straight to it. Or I can see how far it is away from where I am and I can tell how long it will take me to come out at the end of the day. So that's another good important point. What we'll do is we'll drop off and he'll swing through the woods and just not even hunt, he'll just go fast and he's just looking for a track, looking for deer activity. And if he sees where three does have come across and that's it, well now we know there's some does on that side hill. It's important information. The gathering of the information is so substantial and it makes such a huge difference. We'll swing around, drive the whole thing come up through here and wait and when he pops out and he's got one or he says well one buck has gone up on this hillside and I went a little farther and another one went up there well now all three of us could get out up and out and hunt and one of us could head up onto here another one over to here and say he wanted to take that one he'd let us know and now we'd be right in those same woods and at least we'd be on some deer right away and we'd have a quick way of finding them and we wouldn't just continue driving around all day hoping to get one from the road. Another thing that happens with quite a few deer is they don't, since they don't like to cross the roads, they all go around the end of the road. That's another thing that happens quite a bit. So we're always checking beside the road and wherever there's like a small road that goes down in, an old skid trail of some kind, there might not be a landing, it just kind of goes down into the woods and it's pretty decent walking especially on one long straightaway, we'll send a fella down and we'll drive farther and drop another one off and we'll go a little farther and drop somebody else off and they'll just go in and look and see if there's any deer in there. And if one of them comes across the track and this one here drops down in and he never found the track, then this guy knows he's close to that deer and it's nice. It gives you a good idea of what is going on. And later on, say he hunts that deer and he starts hunting it, and everybody else packs up and drives on. When we come back down through later and we see a deer track crossing and it's coming out of that block of woods that he's in, we can let him know. And if there's only seems to be one around or the block of woods is kind of small and we've seen where he hasn't come out or he has come out, we can let the hunter know and that'll make a big difference in his day. If he's close to a road, he can just turn, pop out, we can take him down and he can restart him on the track in the other spot and it'll get you a little bit quicker picked up and get right on it a little faster. If you like any of these whiteboard Wednesdays, let us know. We'll be glad to discuss anything. And make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, we'll keep them coming for you. Take care. Happy hunting. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next video.